So I'm going to get the select tool. I'm going to come down here. I've um, already opened up my picture and it's down here in my tray and I'm just going to drag it and let go and drop it into my canvas there and I'll move it around. Um, and you'll see that it doesn't fit exactly. I've got, I'm going to have a tiny little bit of extra um, blank canvas here. So I'm going to go to my cropping tool. I'm just going to crop that just a tiny little bit so we don't have that. And that looks better. And then I'm going to use Control D to get rid of those ants that were running around the edge of my picture. And now we want to go and choose our brush. And we want and I want to show you what my brush is going to look like. If I come over here, there's my brush and I'm not sure on my screen if it's going to show up very well in this video, but let me show you what that list is going to look like. It was way way too big, so I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Let's try that. And now if I come in here and stamp it, there it is. There's my brush. But that's not what we want. We don't want a big black logo there. So we need to create what is called a clipping mask or a clipping group. And if you look in our layers, we already have our blank layer and we have our photograph. We need for a clipping group, we need two photos. So we're going to click on that, drag it to the new layer tool, let go, and you see that it creates a copy of my image. Now what I need to do is I need to drag this layer, the transparent layer, into the middle so that I've created kind of a sandwich between my two images. And now I need to create the actual clipping mask. So if I put my little hand there on that line between the top image and the invisible layer or the transparent layer and I press Alt, it gives you a funny little symbol and when you click on that you see how it indents this picture. That indicates that I now have a clipping mask. So I want to now go to this layer, the transparent layer, and that's the layer I'm going to be working on. So now I can go back to my brush, stamp it in my photograph wherever I want it, and you see that it did not stamp it on the photograph, but if you look in my layer here, you can vaguely see that it is on that invisible layer. Let me hide this one, and you see it pops up. So let me bring it back by clicking on the eyeball and it goes away again. I don't know if I've ever showed you that little trick. That's what these are, these little eyeballs here. They hide the individual layers. So now that I know I have my brush sandwiched in between those two images with the brush layer or the transparent layer selected, I can now go to my bevel effects and if your effects are not open, if you don't see them over here, go to window and click on effects and it will pop it open over here and then your drop down menu you want to choose bevels and now you can try a couple of these and hit apply and look what happens in your image that's over here you see how it's shown up let me get rid of this brush because it's very distracting um, you see how it's shown up and it looks like it's embossed right into your photograph but that one's not a good one because it's not very readable so you'll have to just play around with the different bevels that one's not good either you'll have to play around and see what works this one's kind of has a cool look, almost looks like, and this one's a little more readable, almost looks like it's debossed into your photograph. I happen to know from doing this bunches of times that this one tends to work the best, so I'm going to do that. And there you can see I now have my watermark that looks like it's embossed into my photograph. That's all there is to it. From there, you just go to File, Save As, Never use save because you want to um, retain the integrity of the original photograph. So if you do save as, you can now save it and rename it. Um, oh, and I want, to, want that to be a JPEG. So I'm going to name it Nugget Box. And while I'm doing this, I want to tell you a cool little trick that I happened to figure out the other night just out of curiosity 
um, I decided to try this and it works. If you press the Alt 0169, it puts that copyright symbol right into the name of your file, which is an just another visual for people to know that, hey, this is a copyrighted image. So, and I put the WM in there so that it indicates to me when I'm looking at my files that it's been watermarked. Hit save, and that's all there is to it. Choose your quality, and there you go. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please go to my blog at crazyforcrafting.blogspot.com and feel free to email me. Thanks. Good night.